I want to talk actually about the macro economy, right. right? So there's always an indicator if Davos is very optimistic, there's usually a downturn in that year. What are you sensing the mood from participants? And is 2020 the year where actually Europe comes back, where maybe negative rates will be less negative? So if we look at the uh, nowcast that we're having, there's clearly a turnaround in Europe. Germany is improving, Europe is improving. Uh, we see an air pocket for growth in the United States in the first half of the year, largely because of the delayed effects of tariffs that were introduced and not removed with the trade uh, agreement and at the same time some of the stimulus from the past is having less effect now including monetary policy which is on hold so uh, we're not as optimistic as uh, some of the participants here but you know we're middle down the road in terms of growth and the economy and that's probably more realistic than last year where everyone was very pessimistic yeah. for the last year I wasn't and it turned out to not be such a bad year so you know a middle down the road is where I would play this year and uh, many of participants are actually there how, how helpful is the US was trying to trade phase one deal and we heard from President Trump yesterday in his inaugural address he, he seemed to, to actually not want to antagonize Europe with extra tariffs. No so um, I think the way that uh, it's been uh, set up is it'd be very hard to reach a, a, a phase two deal because I think in a way it's more a signal that the US and China agree to now in an orderly fashion uh, address uh, the current state of trade between them and China importing more from the US in a year that is vital for President and Trump uh, for his re-election but at the same time I think they'll go separate ways on technology and on some of the more difficult questions so in a way you could look at it as a sort of uh, decision for an orderly divorce rather than a you know putting pulling together and, and going it together what do you see as the biggest market unknown for 2020 is it the US election or is it you know geopolitics with the Middle East I think in the US election you're going to see a similar phenomenon that you saw in the UK that the more extreme the candidates are that run against the incumbent the more likely it is that he will get a, a bit pretty uh, strong support and uh, that's what we've seen in the UK election uh, the Chancellor came out with a very strong majority I expect Trump uh, to really uh, prevail uh, and I'm not working on the assumption that the US government will change anytime soon uh, he'll have less restraint in the second term to do things and I think addressing China issues in the second term is going to take key priority again so uh, this is a you know this is a short-term uh, peace uh, agreement it's not a long-term agreement and you know in a way the, the global economy if the major factor for global growth over the last 10 20 years was the emergence of China the biggest risk for the next five to ten years is China being dialed back in the global economy and more isolated and I'm pretty sure Europe is going to go its own yeah. way uh, on that and so there'll be a very complex I would say equidistant relationship between Europe and China on the one hand and the US which is not the way Europe has in the past teamed up with the United States the UK is probably on a different point um, we also have the, the ECB decision on Thursday together with uh, more of a framework for, for the review what w would you do how difficult is it to change inflation or the inflation target or something like that given that then it's difficult to compare to what we've had in the last 10 years well, I don't ask myself anymore what would I do but I ask myself what will they do because it's important <laughs> for our clients uh, no I think for them it's very important that uh, look once you open the strategy discussion without a very clear view of what you want to do uh, it's like Pandora box you can never get it closed again because every member of the committee we want a different uh, era. I think what is important is central banks have to be committed to long-term objectives and I don't think that the 2 percent objective is out of date. Uh, I think they also have to be clear about their tools and uh, in, in Europe the one thing that is I think more a distortion than a useful tool is negative interest rates. It's an area Will they go further negative? I have a very hard time to believe that they will do more than just edge slightly more negative because you know by now it's clear the longer you keep that policy and we've had it five years just now in Switzerland the more the side effects uh, become important and the less direct bang for the buck you get so I think it is something where uh, they will re look at they will take another look again at whether their limits for purchase programs are really God given or whether they can change them so I don't think they'll go further into negative rates.